Hey guys, it's Mike the Scrapper. Today I'm at a company that buys computer e-waste, such as uh, motherboards, hard drives, things like that. That's pretty much all they deal in. <clears throat> I'm here now. We're going to take a look, see what we have in here, what we're going to sell, and what are half of these things called to help you guys out next time you go to the scrapyard and you don't know what these boards are. So let's go inside and find out. Okay, tell me what this is here. And that, that uh, yeah, would be considered a finger card, but essentially it's a uh, expansive slot card out of a server for RAM. But then you've got network cards, graphics cards, old modems, all that type of run in the middle stuff, that you, sound cards, stuff, any of the, any cards that are going to be on any of the PCI, ISA, you know, AGP, any of those fun different slots on the motherboards, on your servers and desktop towers, where you're going to generally find your PCI, you know, your finger cards that everyone's talking about. Oh, okay. And this here, you would these, classify it these as. These here, this is a slot processor motherboard, so this go with your large slot. It's basically anything P3 and older, so for the most part, you know. Time-wise, you're looking at like you know, pre-year 2000 for the most part. You'll be seeing this type of stuff. You might see a little bit of this in the early 2000s with some of the late iterations of the uh, P3 higher, you know, higher one gigahertz range processors. Okay. And these guys here. This is a large socket. This is a Pentium MMX technology board, you know, from a while ago. These are the these would have you know the black fiber or green fiber. Pentium processors in it that people that you're, that we, that we, that you're told we talk about quite often. Uh, so another, another slot processor board. And then this here, you know, a lot of guys, you know, if you don't notice a while, you know what, what's on here. This is an old compact desktop, you know, with the old EDO RAM from back in the day. This is likely either had a Pentium ceramic chip on it or a or one of the later 486 variants on it. On it. Okay, and small socket desktop processor motherboard. This is an IBM, most likely out of like a Think Center, you know, sort of like the Lenovo brand stuff. You know, all the same. This is out of uh, this is an Intel board, but as you can see the LGA seven seven five. These are the ones with the flip slot where the processor actually goes in there. Those are where your pinless processors come from. And basically, your penless processors and these boards are, you know, your small socket, but your lowest of the, of the low grades. And depending on which vendor you're working with on them, the other anywhere in the, you know, low twos to some guys are paying around a dollar a pound on these now because no, you know, they're not really not very desirable from a refining <laughs> standpoint. Okay. And what is this mix? This stuff is all your mid-grade peripheral board type stuff. You can find it this year. Likely like a cable box or you know, it's not not a DVR version of it, but a cable or satellite box for for your television. I mean, you got some boards that are coming out of uh, LCD TVs mm -hmm. that are actually in the LCD panel themselves. This guy here that is out of an LCD TV. You got all the different video inputs that are in it, and it sits on the back of the TV flat. Okay, and what else? Can you show us that's different than what we're looking at here? And some of these boards, like this, is looks like out of a probably see, Cisco or HP. One another one of the big name brands of networking gear. I mean, this would be you know, your high grade or your telecom board. I mean, it's pretty good. It's not completely populated with chips, but it is a it's a step above the motherboard grades. Okay, now what would that be like per pound? What would you get for something like this per pound? Uh, depending, you know, depending on which vendor you're working with, you know, somewhere, you know, somewhere in the four to five dollar a pound range. Nice. You're okay. looking at generally. Server boards here. Here's a give you. Let me get you a couple examples. These are two different. We call dual socket server boards. They come. In. Two sockets. You have some server boards that do have a single socket, but they're not very popular most of the time. I mean, guys will throw them in with the large socket desktop boards. But this is a newer. This is what they're calling. What some of the guys out there are calling the small socket desktop or excuse me, small socket ser uh, dual ser socket server board. So you get these are actually like a you know Pentium 4 newer server board, and then these are one of your older 
server boards with the large sockets on them. You know that uh, some of the guys are paying you know the mid mid high threes to the low fours on there. As these are like you know like three bucks a pound. I mean us. I mean for for argument's sake, right now the processor refiner we work with they all go together. Okay. We haven't found a need to, to sort them out yet. Trying to create a thousand right. from hard drives. Logic boards. They're all different types in here. Generally, they look, you're going to look something like this. These are out of IDE hard drives, out of a desktop. Then you'll have the SATA hard drives. We've got the different power connector. And then you got, and then, uh, oh, 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 and then these are like out of older servers, the SCSI logic boards. The littler ones that you see that are like, don't have much on one side, but you flip them over. Those are the ones out of the two and a half inch laptop hard drives. This is the most common place to find those. And then here is your run of the mill server backplane. This is out of an older HP server. These um, logic boards are actually what plugs into them in the server, and this is where your, your hard drives actually go into the servers. So that's where they connect into to give you an idea of where, where they'd be coming out of the server from. Okay. These type of backplanes, which are Found in some desktops, but mostly in servers, because of the way the form factor, where they got to sit in a rack, go on the motherboard on the surface, and then it rises up and allows you to put more cards into the server for essentially for expansion purposes. P4 newer ones, you got pros, you know, the heat sinks that are like this as well, and then you got the ones that are copper, bearing any is there. Those go with generally with your number two copper. That's out there. Yeah, so, well. so you would sell the the heat sinks with the copper as you would as sell them as a number two. Yeah, yeah, generally it should be should be graded as number two copper. If you're not getting that, you're not you're getting screwed. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you have yeah. any uh, anyone here with the um, copper the heat sink? Copper, I got them upstairs. Upstairs. The okay, not a problem. Various no. power supplies out. Of, these big guys are out. Going to be out of servers. Got your and then. Pretty much everybody knows what you know yep. what a CD drive or <laughs> floppy drive is. I mean, and here you are your peripheral, what's you know, we consider a peripheral and mid grade board that comes out of the floppy, or not, excuse me, not the floppy, the CD ROM drives. CD -ROM. Floppy drives generally the board is low grade, so it's not worth the time to take it off because you know, time is money, and if you're spending time pulling off something that's you know worth 10 15 cents a pound. <laughs> Exactly. Or something you're already getting 15 cents a pound for. Oh, wow. You didn't really gain anything. I mean, you got your old parallel port printer cables, VGA cables, and these are off your ribbons. I mean, those you can clearly see. That's like yep. that's a male connector, so you can see the exposed pins. But then your other ribbon wire has got the, the female end, so you can't see it. Okay, so those are your Penny and Pros. They're not very common. You're found in your older servers. These generally, on average, weigh around 3, 3.1 ounces. So it doesn't take too many of them to make a pound. Make a pound, exactly. You know, and you know, you're looking at, depending on who's buying them, you know, usually around 15 to 20 bucks a piece. Or, Look at that. You know, depend, you know, or some guys buy them at a price per pound. I mean, it all, all depends on who you're working with on them. Okay. No. Then you got your, uh, your older Pentium ceramics, but they're gold cap and bottom. So oh, like a double, you know, some guys call them a, like a Pentium double gold. Oh wow! No. You know, some some people like to sell them with the uh, with the Pentium Pros because you know they're they're similar, just less weight. And this is just uh, two different variants of the same chip, just depending on which computer they were. And they're basically a little bit larger. You know, okay. pretty much pay the same, but obviously you got a little more weight to it, so obviously you got exactly. more value. Now for CPU chips, how many do you think on average you would need to actually make some money with gold? To so extract the gold and make some money with them. I mean, like if you're refining yourself? Yep, if you were going to do it yourself. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of talk online about these. I mean, you know, people say, estimate that there's anywhere from, you know, half a gram to one gram of gold recovery per chip if you have the proper setup to recover.